Well, welcome. I'm really glad you are joining us online for our podcast. My name is Joel, and I am the pastor here at Paris Community Church. As, as a church, we are for Paris, which, which means that, that we want to be for our community. We want to be for you because we believe that God is for us as well. If you're looking for the full service, you can jump back to our YouTube channel and you can get songs and prayers included as well. One of the things that we really value as a church is building community. And we, we're so excited you took this first step of connecting with us. If you'd like to connect with us a little bit more, may I suggest you sign up for our e-blast. You can, you can jump onto our website, you can click on the link, and within 15 seconds, you'll be signed up. And what the e-blast does is it provides you more information around things that are happening or have happened in the life of our church. It's also a means of us to communicate back and forth a little bit more. Oftentimes, I give additional content and, and thoughts around uh, the weekly teaching. But we're glad that you're joining us. We hope this is helpful. We hope that this builds hope. We hope that this creates a space for you to encounter more of God with you in the midst of wherever you are in life or in faith. Thanks for joining us. Well, the scripture reading today is found in Psalm 17, and I'm reading from verses 1 to 9. Hear me, Lord. My plea is just. Listen to my cry. Hear my prayer. It does not rise from deceitful lips. Let my vindication come from you, and may your eyes see what is right. And though you probe my heart, though you examine me at night and test me, you will find that I have planned no evil. My mouth has not transgressed. And though people tried to bribe me, I have kept myself from the ways of the violent. Though what your lips have commanded, my steps have held to your path, my feet have not stumbled. I call on you, my God, for you will answer me. Turn your ear to me and hear my prayer. Show me the wonders of your great love, you who save by your right hand those who take refuge in you from their foes. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings from the wicked who are out to destroy me, from my mortal enemies who surround me. As we've been going through the Psalms this summer, Psalm 17 strikes me as a psalm that speaks into our life in a variety of ways, especially when people attack us, when they criticize us, when they make untrue statements about who we are. But before we look at that, I'd like you to think about a question. Do you think you are a nice person? Do you think other people actually like you? Now, I'm sure most of us have a very positive self-image about who we are. But it might come as a shock to discover that not everybody always likes us, and at times they do things that can be very hurtful and destructive towards us. Uh, maybe there have been times when you've been criticized. Maybe some people have treated you like a doormat and they kind of wiped their feet all over you. Maybe people have been deceitful towards you or even tried to stab you in the back metaphorically speaking. You might not have experienced all of that, but it doesn't take as long to realize that not everyone shares the same attitude God has towards us. People think of us in different ways. And so when we've been criticized or we've been maligned, when we have had promises broken and people have become upset with us, Sometimes it hurts. Uh, sometimes we get rather confused and wonder, what did I do wrong? How can I make this right? And some people who have been hurt and deeply wounded just start to shut down emotionally so that they won't feel the pain of what they've been going through. So if any of that has been part of your experience, Psalm 17 can speak into your life and into my life. 
As we look at this psalm, we begin to discover that life at times is not always fair. The background of this psalm is about the young man, David, and many of you know his story. But in this psalm, he is forced to run and hide because of the king, whose name was Saul, and his neurotic behavior towards this young man. The background of the story is that David entered into the household of Saul. He was serving as a young shepherd boy looking after the sheep of his father, Jesse. His brothers were in the Israeli army of the time, and they were being confronted by the Philistines, and there was a tall warrior whose name was Goliath. And you probably know the story. Everyone was afraid of this man, except David, and he took him on, and he defeated him. He was then brought into the household of King Saul. Saul's son, Jonathan, became David's best friend, and these two men had an amazing relationship. David eventually became one of the most famous soldiers in all of Saul's army. But what happened was this. They were returning from a battle, and the people who were greeting them as they came into the city foolishly started to compare David with the king. And this is the chant they started to sing. Now, I don't know the musical tunes, and I'm not going to sing it, but here are the words. Saul has slain his thousands, and David his tens of thousands. Now the problem is Saul heard these words and his reaction was such that he became suspicious and jealous and he started to treat David as his enemy and David had to run. And Saul thought that not only was he angry because of this saying, he began to think in his mind, what more can this young man want than the kingdom? And so David has to run and hide. And Saul is in constant pursuit of this young man. And so this psalm that we just shared reflects something of the struggle that David actually had in his life. And what does he do? He turns to God for strength and courage in the midst of these hostile accusations that the king had has uttered. I think there are some implications for each one of us. And it can, the psalm can begin to teach us how we can pray when we are struggling with false accusations and even unfair criticisms, when people have turned against us and are even destroying our character. But there's more than that to the psalm. The psalm helps us to become assured that God is not only for us, but that God is with us and that he can begin to heal even the hurt that other people have caused to each one of us. So what does David do? The first thing he does is that he is transparent before God. So he simply presents to God his case. And this is what he says. Hear a just cause, O Lord. Attend to my cry. Give ear to my prayer from lips that are free from deceit. From you let my vindication come and let your eyes see the right. So he has been attacked and accused by Saul. And he simply lays everything out before God. And he's saying to God, God, look at the issues. I am not saying anything that is deceitful. I'm not making anything up. And I ask you, God, that you will see correctly what is actually taking place. But sometimes we allow God to go even further and to look at the deeper reasons behind what has hurt us. Over the years, I have discovered a couple things 
that I need to do when I have been criticized or falsely accused. The first thing, and this is not easy, the first thing is this. Is there anything that God wants to teach me in what has been said? So would I be open? What are people saying? And what is God trying to teach me in what has been said, even if it is not true? could be teaching me something about my character. Am I going to retaliate? Am I going to seek revenge? Am I just going to shrivel up like a little ball in the corner and cry myself to sleep? What will I do? But the other thing which is even harder is to ask this question. Is there any element of truth in what has been said? Years ago, I took training in conflict resolution. And I remember some things that were really important. And one of the things that I remember very distinctly was this, that when people criticize you, don't suddenly become reactive and become very defensive. But just ask yourself this question. Is there any element of truth in what is being said? Is there anything that I can begin to do that can be corrective to my own character? Because sometimes behind every criticism, there may be an element, though it could be small, of truth. And sometimes the element is not small. It could be large. And we need to look at that. And that's what David did. He said, I want to honestly examine my life before God. Is it true that I'm trying to take over the kingdom? Do I want the applause of all the crowd because of my victory? He discovered that what Paul was say, or Saul was saying was not true, that he was not trying to take over the kingdom. We all need that kind of courage to not hide ourselves from God or from ourselves. Though people might at times make false accusations, make statements that are not true, it's important for you and for me to know ourselves as we actually are before the face of God. And so when people make false statements, when they criticize us, we need to seek God's judgment on what has been uttered. So, if there have been aspects that need to be changed, just simply say, God, will you help me to make the proper change in my life? And when their accusations are wrong, ask God to strengthen you so that you can move forward. And that's what David did. He presented his case to God. And in the third verse of Psalm 19, he said, God, if you try me, if you test me, you will find no wickedness in my heart. So he honestly looked at himself, and that's the conclusion he came to. But then he had a decision to make, and that was he chose not to get even or to retaliate against Saul for what had been said and done. And in verse 4 and 5, he says these words, As for what others do, by the word of your lips, I have avoided the ways of the violent and my steps have held fast to your paths. You see, very often when we are hurt, when people have made criticism or false accusation against us, we want to get even. And that's what some people would say, well, you know, get even for what others have done for you. In fact, there's an old saying that a lot of people hang on to. And the saying is, I tend to get even for what, I ha what has been done against me. David says, no. God, my, my steps have held fast to your path. In other words, I'm going to walk in your way and according to your teaching. So what does he do? He offers a very simple prayer. This is an amazing prayer for each one of us. And there are two parts to this prayer. And the first part is this. Guard me 
as the apple of your eye. You know, that's a term we regularly use even today on a rather frequent basis. You're the apple of my eye. In other words, we're saying to someone, you are highly cherished and loved by me. It's interesting, the original root of this word goes back to this very simple statement. You are the little man in my eye. Now, what in the world does that mean? Well, here's an experiment you might want to try. If you know someone fairly well and you can move close into their space and you look them in the eye, what you will see is your reflection in their eye. You are the little man or the little woman in their eye. And that's where the term literally means the apple of the eye. When we apply it to God, it implies that he watches over us, that he values us, that he cherish us, cherishes us in his sight. You are the apple of God's eye. You are highly cherished and loved by God. And so when people criticize you, when people make false accusations against you, when they attribute to you um, other ideologies that you know are not true, remember this prayer, to know that you are cherished by God. Guard me or keep me as the apple of your eye. See, that's really what unconditional love is about. And this kind of love, knowing that you are cherished by God, will start to heal the hurts of life. Because you are the apple of God's eye. But there's a second part to the prayer. And the second part of the prayer is simply this. Hide me in the shelter of your wings. That's an expression of confidence of God's protective love for you and for me. Just before I came here today to prepare this video, I happened to catch a picture of a swan. And the swan had four little ones. And there was something that frightened them, and she opened her wings, and the little ones climbed onto her back, and she covered them over with her wings. This is the, uh, the, the picture that David prays for. God, hide me in the shelter of your wings. Protect me from all that life is going to bring. It doesn't mean that we're going to be removed from the hurts and the stress of life. But it does ha have this emphasis that God will save those who take refuge in him. Does that really happen? There's a wonderful story in the Old Testament about a young woman whose name was Ruth. The background of the story is that a man and a woman uh, were living in Israel and the economic realities were so difficult that they had to move to a foreign country. This woman and her husband had two sons. And while they were there, they grew up and they married. And then disaster struck that household. The two sons and the father died. And so this woman, whose name was Orpha, she and her daughter-in-laws were left as widows. The one daughter-in-law, she said to her mom, I'm going to stay with my family. The other daughter-in-law, whose name was Ruth, said, no, I will go with you. When this mother-in-law heard that expression, here's what she said. May the Lord reward you for your deeds, the God of Israel, under whose wing you have come to take refuge. And so Ruth went with her mother-in-law, and together they went back to Israel. A whole new life would open up. But in the midst of the uncertainty, Ruth had placed herself under the wings of Almighty God. That is trust. And that kind of trust enables people to move through the dark places of life.
And here's the bottom line, that when we rest in God's kindness and protection, we can start every day anew, realizing that all that God desires for us can be accomplished. And so we read the results of this in the words of David. As for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness. And when I awake, I shall be satisfied beholding your likeness. Have you ever noticed at night when you sometimes go to bed, things often begin to swirl around in your mind? It's hard to go to sleep sometimes because you're so bothered and difficult with the difficulties of life. When we learn to trust and rest in God's kindness and protection, we will choose to listen, not to the voices of others, which can be so destructive, but to what God says about you. And when you listen to what God says about you, you are freed from all the other opinions that people had. So David chose to listen to what God said about him that he was the apple of his eye. He didn't buy into all the accusations of Saul because they knew that they were false. And so David was not dependent upon what others thought of him for his self-worth and value. He knew that he was the apple of God's eye and under God's wing, he would find that protection. Today, wherever you are, my hope and my prayer for you is that as you might be struggling with issues in life, may you look into the face of God and remember these words. You are the apple of his eye and ask him to put you under his wings where he will protect you and keep you safe. Let's pray together. God, in the midst of life, there will be times when we find it devastating, challenging, and at times we just don't understand what is happening to us. There can be false accusations. There can be criticisms. There can be all kinds of circumstances that we don't comprehend. And when we look honestly, we try to discover the truth. And we find that there may be no substance whatsoever to what has been said or done. So what will we do? Will we seek revenge? Will we try to get even? Or will we turn to you? Lord, attend to our cries. Help us to see things correctly. Test us to see if there's any wickedness in our life. But above all, Keep us as the apple of your eye and guard us in the shelter of your wings. And now as you leave this day, may you know the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit who will watch over you and who declares, you are the apple of my eye. This we pray in confidence. Amen.